board members, create an ad hoc committee to create some guidelines and, uh, and, um, and maybe some suggestions, and then you can bring a working document to the board um, to discuss it so that you're not starting from scratch if you want to do it that way. An ad hoc committee or a standing committee that if you have a standing committee that um, you can refer it to, I'm not sure, but either way, you can do it. There, then you don't have to set it in your schedule. It could be the schedule as long as it, if you have an ad hoc committee um, and it's just made up less than uh, five, because we're going to be home of form six, so five or less would be comprised less than the majority. So if you have five members or less, all the board members on the ad, on the ad hoc committee, then it's not bound by the Brown Act, but if you have, um, and it's not a standing committee, it's for the sole purpose of the strategic plan, then that's fine. That means if you increase the, uh, the, the agenda for the, I mean, the agenda for the strategic plan and particular to the board. However, the moment you put a stakeholder on that ad hoc committee, it is bound by the Brown Act, and you must post and follow the same requirements as any other meeting. Okay, just FYI. Those are some of the ways that you can get around.
but uh, they know that the intent is there unless it specifically states here in your bylaws that you have to attend the executive meeting to um, to provide agenda um, items to be voted on because you need to have it on the executive committee's agenda in order for them to vote on it. You need to have communication prior to them to the meeting for them to vote on whatever they're going to vote on for the executive committee. Okay, one last thing.
present. Shall vote to elect five officers. Any tie votes will be decided by a second vote of the two highest vote getters. In case of a tie, the board shall break the tie. Officer terms. Officer elected to a two year term and serve at the pleasure of the board. They may stand for re-election every two years in order to encourage diversity and innovation and leadership. No stakeholders may, may serve more than eight consecutive years as an officer of the board beginning in 2012. Okay? So, with that being said, I'm going to call up the three. Uh, do you have any more public comment? Can I please take them at this time because I'm going to close public comment um, right after this last card. Okay, can I get um, Michael McGuire?
I've been doing what you guys have been doing for 10 years now. I'm thanking you for stepping up and doing a little something. I'm going to be able to come in and try to make it easier for you guys. But as soon as you guys are not following the bylaws, I'm going to be the first one with a couple other stakeholders to make it difficult. Thank you.
Can we go ahead and fill the vacancies right now? Or no, you cannot. Why do you think you have such a large audience? I don't know, ma'am. I'm just here to follow the agenda. And so with that, I'm going to move forward. Um, I just want to say for the record that I have to with that, you know, because the neighborhood department set this agenda up, I think that's the reason why there's no vote in this case. So I have to turn with that. So I just want to say that for the record. Okay.
Julie Quinn State of California. At my own practice, I every day I deal with advocacy and I am ready and prepared to advocate on behalf of LA 32 to um, on behalf of our stakeholders and behalf of our board as well. I am also a licensed mediator. I mean, I'm, I'm a certified mediator as well. I do have training on um, performing oh, several mediations. Um, in addition, I'm graduated from USC Law School. I have a master's in public administration from Cornell, specifically focusing on public policy, public administration. I know Robert was a order ready to prepare them, ready to follow them. I believe our budget is very important also in implementing state rules. Thank you for your time.